In section 10.3, we want to apply our newfound hypothesis test knowledge to a new parameter, namely the one for the population mean, mu. So this is going to be a hypothesis test for a single mean. And again, we have a whole sheet of reference here that we're going to use and refer back to regularly. It's also available in your exam notes packet. There's the technology piece right here, and then the requirements to conduct the test and so on. All right, so let's do it. We have the average credit score in 2019 in the U.S. was 703. There's a source for that in case you're interested. A researcher for Capital One Bank believes the credit score for their customers is different than this value. They gather the following credit scores for a random group of Capital One customers. There are 19.6 million Capital One customers. It's a very large bank. Okay, so this data set is actually available online, so we can use that to answer these questions down below, although I don't think we need it right away. First thing we want to do is verify the conditions. So let's look at what the conditions are. If I go back here, the conditions are these requirements, same thing. So it wants to be a random sample, independent of the population, and normal. Well, that sounds familiar. We've been doing that a while, <laughs> since chapter 8, as a matter of fact. Okay, random is easy because it says it's random. So that's easy. So yes, given. And by the way, I mean, given means literally it's written in the problem. That's what given means. All right, independent of population. Okay, so this is um, a little bit trickier to do. This is that I need my sample size to be less than 0.05 of my population size. Now, for the sample size, I could go pull this data set up, but I can just count it. There's two rows. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14 times 2 is 28. So there's 28 in this sample. And then that's less than 0.05. Capital N is the population size, which is right here. It's 19.6 million. So you can see they're giving it to you. 19.6 million, that's capital N. Not 19.6, it's 19.6 million. <laughs> There's a big difference. And again, once we start putting millions in there, this is so large, you don't have to bother going to go find this. I mean, you can if you really want to, <laughs> but we, we know this is, of course, true. Right? That's a very big number. Um, again, you can find it if you like. All right, so then... What about normal? Okay, well, normal is a little trickier because normal requires that n be bigger than 30, which we don't have, or that we have a graph, say, like a normal probability plot like this. And we saw these in Chapter 7. They're everybody's favorite section, so they're so quick. Um, so this would be because these points are linear-ish, then we'll say that it's normal. So yes, oh, this was yes. And this is yes because the points um, are linear with no outliers. In that graph, right? That's what the graph is there for. All right, let's do the test. So we're gonna conduct the hypothesis test, step one. We need an H0 and an H1. All right, we are going to assume the average credit score is 703. See this right here? This is from the past. From the past. So that's what we're going to assume to be true still, unless we can prove it otherwise. Okay, so we're going to assume that, and this is not a proportion. This is an average, right? See how it says average? That's mu. Right, so this is the average, and then we're going to say it's equal to 703, and then for how we're going to go with the alternative, it says the word different than, right? So that means not equal to, right? So we have average right here to get us mu, we have 703 to get us our value, different than means not equal to. So it's going to be not equal to 703. Step one is done. Step two, 
everybody's favorite stuff, alpha. Alpha's 0.05. It's our level of significance. Done. Step three. <laughs> All right, we go from the easiest step to the worst step. So we want to find t0. Technically, you could write either one of these formulas, but we're going to write the one on the right. So that's the one we use most often. So it's x bar minus mu0 over s divided by the square root of n. Mm. Now, the only thing I know so far, well, I know mu0. Mu0 is 703. And I know that my n on the denominator is 28 because I counted it myself. But I don't know x bar and I don't know s. But we learned how to find those in chapter 3. Mm. All right, so let's get this data set up. Um, at the top, I called it 10.3 notes. So let me look that up. All right, so let me go to StatCrunch. I'm going to go to data sets in general. I'm going to type MAT, capital MAT, 133. Actually, let's just type that. Oh, look, a whole bunch of stuff comes up. <laughs> Eight pages. All right, I, I'm busy. 10.3, let me do that. 10.3, there we go. There it is. Now, how to find the mean and standard deviation, because that's what x bar and s are. It's been a long time. So stat, summary stat, columns. Remember columns? <laughs> so you say, I want the credit score, and I want the mean, and the standard deviation, because this is a sample. If you want the sample size and to verify that it's 28, you're welcome to. It's right there. Compute. And there we have it. So 634.6, 112.6, and 28 is in fact correct. So let me bring those values in, and then let's write some things. Okay, so 634.6, and this is 112.6, and we need to make some notes. So let's put it over here. Note, x bar equals sample mean. We learned that way back in chapter 3. S is sample standard deviation. You find with stat, summary stat, columns. I'm just going to make a little star right there. So just a reminder of all those things. Oh my goodness. Okay, so that was a lot of work. Now I want to find the number here, but I don't want to actually have to put this into decimals. Eh, it seems like a lot of work. And also step four I know is coming and it's going to be a T curve. Looks like a normal curve, but it's not. It's a T curve. So I'm going to need a T curve drawn and some shading. So I want StatCrunch to do this end of step three and the beginning of step four for me. Hmm. Okay. Well, that won't be hard at all because StatCrunch is built for that. So if I go to StatCrunch, I'm just going to leave this up because that's still true. Stat, T stat, one sample. Now, we have to make a choice here. Now, how did I know to do that in the first place? Well, because it says so in the instructions. Stat, T stat, one sample. You have to choose with data if you have raw data available, or with summary if you have just a big paragraph with no data. Ah, but we actually have the data on this problem. It's available to us, right? So we're going to be able to do stat, t stat, one sample with data. Say the credit score. Our mu is equal to 703. That's our null hypothesis. The alternative is that it's not equal to. Make sure you scroll down and click on this little p-value plot right here because you want that p-value plot so you have step four. And say compute. And yes, I could expand this out. There they are, p-value and t-stat. But I can also see them when I do this picture. There it is. Okay, so I have my picture to draw. I don't like my the way I drew my curve here, so let me... Let me fix it. All right, so I'm going to match that curve. So I can see the T stat, that, that negative 3.21, that's my answer right here. So this is negative 3.2128, right? 
And then also, I put negative 3.2128 here, positive 3.2128 here, and I shade the tails just like it is on the graph. This guy's negative t0, this is positive t0. And then the p-value is automatically both tails. And the p-value was, let's go back there, 0 0.0034. Okay, so I'm matching that picture. The negative 3 point, so you can see if I let my mouse hover, you can see negative 3.2128 positive 3.2128. See? So there's one on the right and there's one on the left. And if you let your mouse hover, it'll tell you what they are. Right? So there they are. Those are the values. And then the p-value is the area in both tails. Okay? So you're matching that picture on your graph. Right there. And then we just label them. t-stat, negative t-stat. Right? Um, technically, there should be like little absolute value signs. That's what it does in the graph here, but it's fine. If, as long as you put positive and negative, you're fine. And then p-value with a double-sided arrow and put your p-value. You're matching this two-tailed picture because it was a two-tailed test. Step four is done, but we better make notes. So we found this value and this value um, with stat crunch. So stat crunch, we did stat t stat, uh, one sample with data. That's how we got step three and four. Right? To do steps three and four, we made stat crunch do the heavy lifting. Not, not the beginning part of step three, but the end of step three right here. All right, now we just have to make a decision. If your p-value is low, reject HO. So look at your p-value and look at your HO. So your p-value is 0 0.0034. Your alpha is 0 0.05. That is less than that. So you're going to reject HO. P-value is low. It's got more zeros in it. So you're going to reject HO. So that means that there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that, all right, now what were they claiming? The credit score is different than 703, the credit score for Capital One customers. The credit score for Capital One customers is different than 703 points, right? It's a points thing. So we had to use stack crunch two different ways. We had to use stack crunch once to find the X bar and the S, and then again to find this value here and this whole P value action and that picture and everything, right? So it's important to write down both ways. There's stack crunch path for finding the X bar and the S and another stack crunch path for finding the end result for step three and the whole T of step four and the P value. All right, I'm going to show how to do this in the TID4. So if you're not using a TID4, you can just skip ahead to the next problem. All right, TID4 folks. So we have a little bit of an issue because um, we have to work harder <laughs> to get the data set. So we're going to actually have to go to stat, edit, type in the data set. So we have to sit here and type all these values in, I'm sorry to say. So give me a second, I'll be back. Okay, I have all the values typed in. Now, just like them, you have to do stat and then calculate and then one variable. List one, no frequency list, calculate. And there's your X bar at the top, which is 634.6. And there's your S, which is 112.6. So the, it'll find them, but you have to put all the values in and do it. 
And then to do the test, you go to stat, tests, t-test, so number two, and you want to tell it data because we have data on this one. We want 703 as our null hypothesis. Our data are in list one. Always leave frequency as one. That's a more complicated thing than we're doing. Then not equal to, and then calculate. And there you can see your T score right there, your P value. Oh, there's X bar and S. You can actually find them there instead of waiting um, and finding them the other way. That's that's nice. So um, stat, test, I can also draw it. And again, it's number two that we're doing. So I could go down to the draw portion as well. There, it didn't really draw much. It's not showing us much because um, the, the calculator tends not to draw very well, especially if it's far out in the edges. But there you have it. That's how to do the stat t test. And again, you're using with data here, just like they are, because you have data, so you have to choose the data option up at the top. That's why the data portion is dark.